Hello, everybody, and uh, good, uh, I guess, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. <laughs> Appreciate everybody being with us today. We're going to uh, just just pause about 20 or 30 seconds here, and uh, we're going to have a few more that, that are chiming in as we get started. So we'll, we'll just give it a few minutes here, or a few seconds here, all right? We'll likely have a few more join us as we get started, but uh, just for the, for the sake of time and, and to give Shanna uh, uh, enough time to really talk with everybody, I, I want to go and get us started. Uh, good afternoon, and, and, and again, welcome. My name is Rob Cadill. I'm the Executive Director of Phi Gamma Delta, and I am pleased that uh, everyone could join us today for our, our first ever housing conference. You know, we've, we've talked about this uh, in, in a variety of ways over the years, and I did not envision that our first one would, would be virtual, but certainly uh, we're, we're opening some doors as those opportunities become available to us. Uh, my, my role today is, is just to serve as a, 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 to provide introductions and be a moderator here. Uh, so I am I'm very happy and uh, to sh introduce to you uh, Shanna Smith. Uh, Shanna is uh, with one of our preferred partners, Upper Crust Food Service, who received a great a great shout out and endorsement uh, from Dave Shrek this morning, as you heard. Um, but again, up, Upper Crust is the fraternity's preferred food, food service provider for our, our chapter houses and house corporations. She joined Upper Crust as the Director of Strategic Partnerships in fall 2000, in 2017, and has worked in the food industry as a home economist and food rep for over 12 years. Uh, she has more than 20 years of property management experience and is a volunteer with her sorority, Alpha Phi. She serves both locally and regionally in a, in a number of roles and is on their international executive board. Uh, so Shannon, I'm not gonna go through your full bio. I'll, I'll let you introduce <laughs> anything else that you'd like to about yourself, but I'm gonna turn the, the, uh, the mic over to you and. Let you talk uh, with our members here. Thank you, Shannon. Well, well thank you, everyone. Um, so, as Rob said, I am with Upper Crust Food Service. Um, have been with them for a little over three years. Um, also, serve on a house corporation board. So, many of the things that Dave talked about and the last session I was on, I completely relate to. And COVID has been um, unique from a HCB perspective, and then from a food service perspective. Um, I'm going to share my screen with everybody. And let's see if I can get this. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, we'll kind of go with this. Um, so my introductions, um, I'm going to talk about Upper Crust Food Service. Um, and then have some chance, some time to answer any questions. Um, the um, piece of it is, if you have kitchen service av availability and you are letting the men in the kitchen, um, I would just probably say, you know, even at my own house, I don't let the women in the house. I kind of concerned. You know, they may not even be able to boil water, let alone operate a gas range and, you know, take the place down. Um, but I want to show, talk to you about the reasons to outsource your food service and what we can bring um, to it. The other part of this is these are great things if you're operating the kitchen yourself and you have your own employees kind of showing some things maybe that you can um, utilize going forward. You know, First thing, has any of this ever happened to you? Chef doesn't show up. Um, food purchasing is not within the budget that you have set. Um, the men are starting to complain about the food. In worst case, you get calls from the parents, um, the hovering airplane folks. Um, kitchen isn't as clean as you would like. Um, your chef doesn't know how to deal with allergies. Men, men are coming to you saying, I want out of the meal plan. Um, I'm not eating there anymore. Um, making sure your workers' comp payroll taxes are being filed on time. We see this a lot, especially if there's no house corporation board involved and we're dealing with the chapter themselves. And they were like, we have to pay what? And we're like, oh boy, this, this is going to come up. Um, or there's just no time to oversee the kitchen. Um, and so what we want to do is kind of give you the... 10 things of where a food service company can come into play. Um, on staff 
liability. Um, you have a trained chef present at every meal. Um, we can hire your chef. So if you have a current chef and you're thinking, I just want out of the day to day, we don't want to have to worry about the budget. A lot of times we can come in and hire the chef. They come onto our payroll. Um, they get our benefits. We absorb them into our plan. Um, I like to preface that is um, sometimes it's a the chef maybe has problems planning menus, um, doesn't have the training they, they need, we can provide that. And then there's also that option that sometimes they just don't work out. So I tell everybody that says, we'd like you to hire our chef is, we're happy to do that. There is just a model we work under. And if they don't wanna work under that, we have the ability now as their employer to uh, make a change. Um, at the start, with each new client and service, they get on, um, they receive training and on-site help. So a lot of times our regional manager, campus manager, regional director will be in that house um, for the first week or two with the chef, um, showing about ordering, um, kind of what we expect a salad bar, a hot well, all of those things to look like. Um, budget certainty, number two, we do one contracted price for you. Um, so it will be, equal or less than what you're paying now. Um, and we do it in a monthly or semester payment so that you know it's the same amount you know, every semester, every month. We generally find, especially as we've come into COVID, everybody's totally into monthly payments um, from that standpoint. If your kitchen isn't a profit center, it should be. Um, even using a food service company, because you know what your contracted price is, your kitchen can um, become a profit center. I tell everybody, my price to you, and so I'm just kind of, Mitchell, I saw your name first. So if my price to Mitchell for his meal plan was $1,100 per semester, he needs to take into effect, what's it cost me for my normal um, repair and maintenance? Um, you know, what is my profit? What's my utilities running? all of that and add on. Like um, my last session I was on with renovations, they talked about your uh, rent being about 90% of what your the dorm rent is. Your food plan should be a, you know about 90% of what the dorm meal plan is. Because, you know, and you're comparing, the great thing is uh, the university has many meal plans to look at. And it's one of the things that I usually do when I'm working with a client is, hey, you know, here's a 14 meal plan from us. Here's the 14 meal plan from the university. You've got some space in there to, um, you know, add your, your upcharge to it. Just like the university has an error mark, they're putting an upcharge before they send it to the students. Um, number three is a reduction of liability. We employ all the staff. We provide the workers comp. Um, we provide medical insurance along with other insurance options, which we know most house corporation boards because of the few number of employees. It's usually something financially you're not able to do. Um, our employees are all W-2s. We don't do any 1099, so it's an all W-2. Um, our employees are usually also employed during that entire school year. Um, we lay off in the summers, certain employees. Uh, we, we do provide the opportunity for summer employment. Um, we have some houses that do food service over the summer because they rent year round. Um, we've also found that the summer camp world is a great place for um, our employees to work over the summer. And so we do do some summer camps. So we have that ability if they want to work. Um, many of your staff already have kind of their own summer gig. It was different this last summer because most of them, if they're in the kitchen, they go into catering. And a lot of that did not happen um, this past summer. Accountability. Um, you have a contractual agreement uh, with us that will take care of your members. Um, from the standpoint of severe snowstorm and nobody gets in there, we are making sure food's delivered. A lot of times too, we are, we have kind of our 
um, snow plan, for lack of better words, in place so that, you know, there's some stuff already made up in the freezer that if you have a house director, it's just a matter of, you know, unthawing and putting out worst case scenario. Um, the other is you get an estimate prior to the start of each semester. So estimates for us, you know, went out in July and usually in December, January, depending on start, so that you have a chance to make those adjustments. And with COVID, you know, that has been all over the board um, to, hey, they did away with spring break. We're shortening from a 16 week to a 14 week. Um, actually had one campus that went to a 17 week. They actually added a week because of no spring break because we're gonna feed during all those wellness days, um, which we laughed. I laughed with the House Corporation Board president when he called me about that. Two of them were on a Friday and I went, so they really kind of think they're not gonna leave for a three day weekend. But um, so we give you that chance to say, hey, there's gonna be X amount of people living in um, on the, this meal plan, the live outs are gonna be on this meal plan. Um, we would rather deal with that up front than have a change kind of midway through the semester that somebody catches it and says, oh crud, I didn't give you the right numbers. The great thing on a monthly billing is especially as the fraternity um, has recruitment is adding people on because then we just prorate as you add people onto the plan. Um, you know, if school starts in August and by, you know, September, there's a new group of men, or if it's, they start in January by February one, we just are getting that information and then prorate it. And that billing, new billing, when it goes out in February includes those new, um, new members. Awesome food. I think you talk to anybody. We all say we produce great fruit, food. Um, source high quality ingredients, hearty servings of fresh fruit food. Um, we know men eat primarily about five to seven ounces of protein per meal. So we know in a fraternity, our um, meal plans are a little more heavily protein um, than a sorority. Variety um, is key. Um, usually with a new start, um, I send out a food survey because we really want to know what they want to eat. We don't want to put, I always use this one, you know, pickled beets on the salad bar, knowing that is like one of the lowest ranked things <laughs> that anybody puts when they get the food survey. But, you know, uh, cinnamon toast cereal is one of the top two across the country. So we're going to ask them, what do you want? You know, we don't want to serve Indian food, if 95% of the chapter is ranking Mexican, Italian, and Greek is their top three. Um, so we want that variety. We want um, them to have some input into it. Um, and then we get into customizing those weekly menus. Um, we do not do a set rotated menu. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we develop the menu in a few slides, but you know, we want their input. Um, because every chapter eats differently. Um, and I'm sure if anybody goes back to their chapter, you know, and you see what they eat today, you're like, you know, boy, we didn't eat that, or we didn't have the choices. You just ate whatever the chef put out or the cook. In my world, it was the cook. Um, and if you didn't like it, you didn't eat, or, or you, you know, paid for something else. Communication, um, direct access to any of us, kind of 24-7, 365 days. Um, the House Corporation Board, the House Director, and the Chapter has access to the Regional Director, uh, the Regional Manager, if the campus is large enough and there's a Campus Manager, and then a Customer Advocate. Um, we have a customer advocate in every region, and that person's sole responsibility is to speak on behalf of the Chapter. Because as we know, uh, sometimes a chapter member is not comfortable going to the chef. They don't want to hurt their feelings. The customer advocate doesn't hire or fire anybody. So they, they used to meet in person. It's been happening via Zoom. And, you know, gives them a chance to talk. Um, talk about what's working, what's not. 
Um, some of those meetings are five, 10 minutes. Some of them are half an hour. Some they incorporate into a food committee, really kind of works with whatever the chapter wants to do um, on, on those food committee meetings. And then number seven is technology. Um, we know they're on their phone all the time. Um, so we have an app that we use that we developed, did not use widgets. So it gives us the ability to make any changes that we want. Um, the chapters can rate meals on a five-star system. And so we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. So they download the app in Google Play or the App Store. Um, they get a code and um, I'm using, you know, we're at, we serve the Miami of Ohio house. So this is their code, Miami Fiji. And then once they go in, they create their own profile. So they can go in, check off what allergies they have, and then they can do their preferences. And their preferences could be vegetarian, uh, gluten, um, gluten-free, vegan, kosher, um, other that they can put in. We're kind of always updating that part. This part, then the chef sees the profile of the chapter members when they're um, doing any of the kind of their meal planning or late plates. So once, on, once they're in there, um, they can see the menu, um, gives them the ability to sign up for late plates. So if they have a class, they're working, um, the availability of a late plate sign um, shuts off really 15 minutes prior to meal service starting. So my example is if meal service starts at six, your cutoff of signing up is 545. Um, they can customize their late plates. So if they look at the menu and I can tell you when we do fish, we always do some kind of other po um, protein offering because it's kind of about a 50-50 mix in the house of who eats fish. But they may just say, I don't want the chicken, fish only. Um, extra broccoli, whatever it happens to be. And then the chef is preparing that late plate almost like the student was going through the buffet line. So that it is a little more customizable for them. Once again, I said the ratings, um, it's a one to five star rating and whether they rate a one or a five, they can make comments on that. Um, I have learned a lot of new words on the uh, comment section. So didn't know dank was a good word. Uh, we saw that come through last year and we all went, ooh, that doesn't sound good. But we saw dank and five stars. So we all kind of went, okay, I guess that's a good word. Um, lit and fire are also good words. So it is kind of um, a little humorous on it, um, on that part of the ratings and the comments. The part of this is the chef will see these, but the chef doesn't see a name attached where the chef sees a name attached for everything else, this piece they don't. And we did it because we really want the chef to have that relationship with the chapter. And the last thing we want is the chef to kind of go, so Kelly, you didn't like my meal, what's up? We don't want that happening. The regional manager, everybody else above sees the name. Um, we have the ability to reach out um, to members via the app, we don't do it. But the customer advocate may come back and go, you know, whether it's yourself as a house corporation board or the house director going, hey, you know, Rob has never given us anything above a one. I would really like to meet with him and find out what are we not serving? You know, what, what's our disconnect so that we can figure out how to better meet Rob's needs? Um, I can tell you, I did have that happen once and we found out that person wasn't even supposed to be on the meal plan. And so the house corporation board and the chapter are like, oh, this is good news. Um, and so they kind of, uh, that person, you know, came off the meal plan. Um, but the other part is the chapter sometimes, especially at a food committee or how we're talking, they're aware of who that person is and usually can give some insight um, to that to that and then just a, an ability for us to connect and kind of find out how we can better do that experience for them. The Crave button, we added this about a year and a half ago. 
And we see it used, we saw it real heavily kind of right after the first of the year before everybody was coming back. But the Crave button is the members can request a meal. So it could be, I'd really like to see breakfast for dinner. Um, I liked that roasted cauliflower. Um, sometimes it's a, I never wanna see meatloaf on the menu again. I mean, it can be whatever. The chefs see this, the chefs then use that Crave button to help create the menu. Um, we have some chefs that about midway through the semester, especially if it's an active app house, they'll use that and they'll do Crave Week. So they'll let them ever, let everybody know, hey, dinner the week of you know February 15th, I'm gonna feature the top Craves. And so it gets them kind of like, ooh, I can be heard. The part that we find really interesting is you can tell when they're all sitting around a table um, together because all of a sudden like 10 people have put in like steak and lobster or peanut butter pie and it's like coming in and we kind of look at it and go, oh, they're talking to each other. They kind of know, hey, I'm craving this, put this down too. A um, lot of activity on it. It's it's interesting where we see, we have seen as they came back this spring, the craves have been more comfort food. So I don't, we're, you know, we're kind of going, okay, when they were with mom and dad, mom and dad may have eaten out more, a different type of cooking, but, but what we're, they're seeing is more craves. Um, also, no surprise, mostly in the sororities, it's can we have healthier food? Um, I don't think we're going to have as much of Hey, I'm going on spring break. Can we just have salads for three weeks? Um, but, you know, we are, I think, going to see them using this a little bit more, especially as a lot of schools have taken away from spring break. Uh, food is really what they have to live for um, right now and really from fall. Um, industry leaders, um, We've become a preferred food service choice um, with, ex, you know, by exceeding our customer expectations. Um, I think as a house corporation board, I was with Upper Crust before I came to work for Upper Crust. And um, I will say, I think one of the things that we do well is respond quickly to questions and concerns um, and be able to solve the problems, whether, you know, it's, something we have to deal with an employee issue only, or if it's a joint, how do we make this work? Um, you know, we did a lot of that with COVID this year and a lot of it responding quickly to how a health department um, changed. So speaking of the COVID, we have been working on this since basically March um, of last year, you know, when Schools stopped, you know, coming back after spring break. I will tell you on about 12 campuses, we stayed operating till normal spring 2020 ended, which was kind of blew us all away. Um, a lot of it, I will tell you, were um, house corporation boards that were like, I don't want to get into refunding money. So they have Wi-Fi and I'm just going to keep them here. And if they want to leave, they're on their own and I'm not going to refund money. Um, we did a lot of informative Zoom calls with 1848 housing um, boards and chapter houses throughout the summer. Some of you may have been on some of those. We trained our staff over the summer and throughout this fall and into the spring as health departments and the CDC guidelines have changed. We have been updating everything um, for our staff and continue to do so. Um, you know, we have a I was telling Rob earlier, you know, at Oklahoma, really nothing changed. You know, they were still allowed to do self-service when school started, yet we had some campuses, everything was in a to-go box. And the out-of-house guys had to come to like the back door. They couldn't come into the house to get their meals. They were just getting their meals handed to them. Um, to, you know, others where, you know, our ideal was and has been, you know, the old lunch lady meal service. They're coming through, we're serving them. So they're still getting the benefit of a buffet. Um, yet 
are, um, you know, not touching all the utensils. And so I think this, you know, we're going to see a lot of, you know, gloves were always required from us in the kitchen. You know, masks are required. We're probably going to see a lot of that stay. Um, you know, the, the piece that we hope, um, for lack of better words, relaxes a little bit is more of that out of house meal participation. Um, because I know that has hurt some chapters where it's just only been the live-ins um, being able to have food. And then kitchen design. Um, you know, we offer to anybody, um, no charge to you, any help on kitchen design. Renovation, you know, ground up, um, hey, we're looking at some new equipment. Should we buy or, you know, buy new, um, buy used, um, et cetera. Bob Tai, who's our director of operations, um, he is from the University of Nebraska. He's a Delt, so we don't hold that against him. Um, has, you know, owned restaurants over the years, became a kitchen consultant, helped design um, kitchens across the country, and then came to Upper Crust about eight years ago. Um, so he is always open to that, looking over plans, just a, hey, how does this flow for somebody working in the kitchen type thing? Um, and then we also offer you a list of smallwares. You know, there's certain things to, um, that the kitchen needs to have to, you know, be up and going um, on that. Um, the other part that Dio and I talked a little bit about because I usually will write an article for the newsletter is our one for next month is really gonna be on kitchen design and commercial kitchen layout. And then we're gonna follow that up in March with a Zoom call on just you know having Bob on there um, and probably an architect that we have worked with that I'm sure some other houses have worked with just on answering those questions. Because for any of us, the cost of the kitchen is something you only wanna do once in your lifetime. You know, you can remodel bathrooms, reconfigure a bedroom, buy new furniture, but the dollar amount you spend per square foot on the kitchen is one um, you just want to do once. And I built my sorority house from the ground up seven years ago. In this last summer, we did our servery and expanded it. it. Was we never thought we would have to touch the kitchen and serving area again, at least not in my lifetime of being on the board. And we did it six years in. Um, you know, the good thing for us is we've been planning for, you know, two years prior to that. Um, but I think that's the piece. You know, you may have to replace kitchen equipment, but you really don't want to change the walls and where the electrical and water and all of that is. So we're more than happy to help on that. This is my bonus one the why we do it. Um, we're here to serve the chapter members, be a partner of yours, um, you know, not just this year, but years to come. And this is the why. Um, the, you know, it's the, the faces. Um, I, you know, the one on the right, the men at the table is from the main house, uh, Fiji house we serve. I didn't want to zoom in too close because as I blew it up, I went, ooh. I think I see some solo cups and not quite sure what are in some of those things. So I'll just leave it a little on the uh, broader picture. Um, but we do it because of the chapter members that we serve. You know, um, I had a conversation yesterday with a house director and I said, you know, we all exist because of the chapter. Because if there wasn't a chapter, you know, there wouldn't be advisors, a house corporation board, food service, a structure. Um, and so, you know, you have to enjoy working with this age group. Um, they're challenging. Um, I can tell you, I work with men and women's group. I truly prefer, I'll deny it if anybody brings this up, but I really prefer working with men because it is a honest conversation you can have. They're honest back. Um, I don't have to worry about them having their feelings. I mean, I'm not that I'm not mean to them, but I don't have to worry about them having their feelings hurt and hearing from mom and dad. Um, or with my own chapter, I have to kind of figure out, oh my God, this could get back to mom and dad. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to kind of 
make this sound pretty. Um, but the, the men just want you to be honest and have that conversation with you. And so I truly do enjoy um, working with them. You know, your responsibilities as a house corporation board from a food service standpoint is to provide a functioning kitchen and the small wares to operate within. Um, there have been many houses that we've walked into and stuff's not working um, or, you know, they have like, two pans and a spatula. Um, like I said before, we can help with those things. Um, the other part is the regular maintenance of your kitchen equipment. Um, and that includes the repairs, the annual, semi-annual inspections. Those are all those things that you need to add on to your meal service rate that you're gonna pass along to the chapter members. Um, and I will give a plug just from a property management company. I know CSL is doing some sessions, but if you don't want to be part of that regular maintenance, the repairs, the inspections, a property management company can help with that. Um, I use one for mine. Um, and, you know, none of us want the call, you know, hey, the toilet's plugged or, you know, the kitchen sinks are backing up, um, you know, due to some sewer issue. Um, property management can help with that. Um, so, you know, the other piece is your kitchen operates almost like a small restaurant within a fraternity house. And so when you go with a food service company, you're basically saying you run the restaurant and we will take care of the kind of the dining room out um, and the chapter piece and, you know, all of the, the property management and that whole functioning piece of it. Um, but we will take care of everything basically from the servery back into the kitchen, making sure it's cleaned, um, you know, all of those pieces that come into it. We just don't do repair and maintenance, um, you know, on, on the kitchen equipment. I will tell you a lot of our staff can troubleshoot some stuff prior so that it could just be a, hey, this is, you know, a bad, you know, um, temperature gauge or whatever it happens to be, or it's missing some leveling feet. And it's why, you know, the cakes always look like this versus straight, um, some kind of simple stuff. Um, Want to be able to answer your questions. I have a couple resources. Um, one is our regular website. And then the other is the COVID. So if you want all of our COVID information, you, you have to basically copy and paste that because if you go to our site and look for COVID, you will not find it. We kind of have it hidden on the backside. Um, but then my email's there and my phone number and people are welcome to contact me anytime. Um, like I said, I'm, I've been asked to talk as food service and then asked to kind of flip my house corporation board hat on, um, which I can, you know, I've done a few times. Um, and I know everybody operates very differently um, with this. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so we can kind of see each other again. So, and I don't know if, does anybody have any questions? I know a lot of you are on mute, just to FYI. I think everyone can feel free to unmute and, and we can just have a conversation. We've got about 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes left in our session. Yeah. Is there a minimum number of uh, clients that you need in a house to be able to have the uh, upper crust? No, um, Mitchell, it's really based on a, um, we have a set semester um, minimum from a contract price. So it, for us, you know, it's usually about $40,000 a semester because a majority of that is staffing you know, the wages. So, you know, if you've got 20 people, then, you know, they're paying a little bit more. That's kind of one of the reasons we always say getting some out of house is really good on the meal plan. Um, I will tell you this year with COVID, we've all had to be creative because the in-house numbers have been different and some been restricted by the university. So, um, but we have, um, you know, kind of a variety, yeah. you know, from about 25, you know, on up. So it's all about us being able to pay the chef's wages. Um, 
I worked with a house directly and they were like, well, there's only 75% of us are allowed to be back in. And I said, you would not go to work for 75% of the wages still doing the full amount of hours just because fewer people could come into the restaurant. And you could see the wheels kind of turn and they were like, oh, I guess you're right. And I said, I can save on food costs and our profit, but I can't on the wages and we have to be competitive on wages. So Kelly, you had a question? Um, I do, I have several, but stop me if I'm asking you too much. Okay, do you have any existing chefs that have gone through your program and maintained their job in the interim? Interim from meaning COVID? From being, no, from being um, uh, contracted. I'm well, yeah, yeah, so a lot of ours come back. You know, they get laid off in the summer and they come back in the fall. And so we've had some people that have been with the company eight, nine years. Um, the great part is it gives the ability, the way our company is structured for movement up. So if a chef is in a house and does well and wants to be able to grow, there is that opportunity for them to go to his campus manager. Some regions have a traveling chef kind of doing that part of it. Um, okay, but say we wanted to keep our existing chef. Oh. Yes. He would have to go through your program in order to become an employee. Yeah. And our program is really kind of like talking with the chef. Right. That's what I figured. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's really, you yeah, know, and then the biggest part is here's how we operate and here's how we buy. And this is what we do. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so you already know he's got training if he is a certified chef and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do for special events when COVID's over and we can have parties again? Uh, parents weekend, Fiji special events. We just price those per event. Yes. So usually, like, yeah, we'll work with the chapter or the house director on the, what's the event? How many is serving? What's your budget? Um, the chefs used to approach it from, well, let me create a, let me, let me create a budget or a meal plan for you. And, you know, the menu. And then they would nine times out of 10 it was, I hate to, you know, say it was always the fraternity guys. They'd come back and the poor guy doing parents mm -hmm. weekend going, well, I only have five bucks a person. And the chef's right. giving them a $17 a person. Great. And they're like, he's like, oh, well, we need to change. And then the young man or young woman's like, oh, but I really wanted that. And I really like that. So we approach it now. What's your budget? And what's your theme? And what are you trying to do? Gotcha. Perfect. And kind of work it that way. And a lot of times too, they'll like if the chapter has normally, and I use this example, if they have a Sunday night dinner and they want to do a brunch on Sunday for parents weekend, we will then swap and take that credit from dinner and also fold that into that to help them offset some of those off. Uh, is there food available like prepackaged foods or power bars or something 24 seven or is everything locked in the kitchen after certain hours? So every house is different. Um, so part of our normal 24 seven snack that is just part of our normal package is always um, whole fruit, peanut butter and jelly, bagels, cream cheese, if there's a place for that to be out. And then we work with the chapter. If they want more, we just can add it on. So a lot of times a chapter will say, you know, we want a extra hundred dollars per person to a snack. And then the chef will just work with them within that budget of what do you want that to be so they can change it. So we have some that do a basic and I have one group that spends almost $2,500 a week on extra snacks. It's kind of like a 7-Eleven set. <laughs> That's but, kind of <laughs> but, um, but you have to have that place for them to go because we don't want them going into the kitchen and the health departments with COVID have gotten really tight on that. Um, and I think my last one is, um, so our, our house is owned by the university mm -hmm. and the chef is contracted. I'm the house mom. I chose to be an employee. <laughs> and so we we're actually working in separate terribly separate things with a lack of communication between all of us from the school. So part of the equipment in the kitchen is the schools that they're responsible for. If I can get them out to fix things, part of it belongs to the fraternity and this, this it's a mess now because now since he can't do the buffet, his, his buffet is in the kitchen where he serves from. So be that being said, 
I guess you all would work with the university as well mm -hmm. to say, yeah. hey, this really needs to be updated. Yeah. And this is not a good situation. And is this just the prices that you give us? Do you normally have more than just the chef? Do you have other staff depending on the size of the house? Or mm -hmm. So that's all yeah. good. Yep. So depending on the size of the house will determine how many people are in there. Um, as Dave said, you know, on Shrek on his, you know, he's, they've got some young men that serve. So there are some guys that, you know, are helping on chapter dinner night. Um, you know, in a sorority, you see more for um, kind of aging myself with but some of you will know is, you know, it used to be houseboys. Sororities had houseboys. That was the way some fraternity men ate is they were a houseboy at a sorority. Mm -hmm. So we kind of work with whatever the needs are on that. Um, the house director is always a free of charge for us. We never include them in our count um, on that. So, you know, we'll just work. Um, we just started this semester at the University of Central Florida. I've never jumped through so many hoops with the university because those are all university housing. And to get, a, you know, be allowed to do meal service um, on that campus. You know, we had to provide a lot of insurance pieces um, for them. So the other thing, yeah. We've got probably one, about one minute left we're gonna have to jump Any off. other questions? Yes, Henry. Um, hi, just to want to follow up on Mitchell's question. Is there, I know you mentioned $40,000 a semester, but is there an ideal number of uh, men in a house or women in a house that makes the economics much more advantageous for you? Well, from a live-in, it's kind of that 30 to 35, but, but we've okay. seen fewer, as long as you're bringing the out-of-house people in, that's the piece that helps to um, bring that in-house number lower. So normally you're in-house or getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're out of house, you know, in the ideal world for you to make money on your meal plan, the ideal world is you're out of house or having lunch and dinner because they're, they're never gonna get up and come to the house for breakfast. Um, but being able to add them on is a huge benefit. And I'm, you know, when we do a proposal, we can always give you options. Here's just the in-house, here's the out of house and how it brings, um, you know, changes those numbers for you. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Jenna, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. And, uh, and all, our, all of our attendees uh, appreciate you being with us as well. Thank you. Uh, problem. Our next session begins here uh, promptly at the 2.30. Oh. So in your chat here, I, I'm sending you the, the link to the conference schedule in case you don't have it handy. Uh, within that schedule, you're going to find the links to, to get to that, that next set of breakouts. Okay. Thank so you. We'll one more round of breakouts in our closing session. Everyone have a great day.